Welcome back to quick revision on branch accounting. This is part 2 and in this part we will be discussing independent branch and foreign branch. If in case you have not seen part 1, you can go back and watch part 1. The link is also there in the description of this video. And once you finish that, you can come back to part 1. Just to give you a heads up, the branch can be divided into two categories. That is inland branch and foreign branch. We have covered inland branch. It is dependent in the first part. Further, that inland branch can be divided into dependent and independent. Dependent branch can be accounted under data, stock data, final accounts method or wholesale price method. And this complete thing what you see here is covered in part. Now in this video what we will be discussing is we will be revising independent branch accounting in the books of the branch by the branch and updation and consolidation detailed and abridged. Further we will also revise foreign branch. Let's get started. Let's begin with independent branch. Under dependent branch accounting of the branch is maintained by the head office accounting for the transactions made by the branch recorded from head office perspective whereas in this case accounting is done for the transaction of the branch from the perspective of the branch accountant is sitting in the branch and it has accounting two parts has to be learned first part how to do accounting next part how to consolidate this into head office to consolidate we have two methods abridged and detailed but to begin with let's discuss how to account for transactions in the branch Let's begin with. So, whenever we are doing transactions at the branch, we need to see what is the corresponding transaction entry in the head office entries, head office books also. For the goods sent by head office to the branch, head office should record the entry branch account debit to goods sent to branch. Same entry what we discussed in the past. In the branch, we would have to record goods from head office account debit to head office account. Throughout, in head office books, we will have branch account. In branch books, we will have head office account. In the head office, if you have debited branch, in the branch you would have credited head office. At the end of the year, head office account balance in branch books, branch account balance in head office books should match. If they don't, something is wrong. We need to rectify and reconcile, only then we will do consult. Next transaction. The goods are purchased by the branch, not from head office, directly it is purchased from somebody. Payment can be made by branch, payment can be paid by head office. The payment is made by branch. Goods are purchased by branch. Head office will write no end. The payment is made by head office. Then head office will uh, if the payment is made by branch only. Branch will write the entry purchase account debit to cash. Just normal entry. Independent books normal entry. What if the goods are purchased by branch? Payment is made by head office. Very simple. Branch will write purchase account debit and it will inform the head office to credit cash. And in the head office books, we will debit branch. In the branch books, we will credit. Because it is like branch has received money from head office. So, branch owes money to head office. It will credit head office. Head office has paid money to branch. It is supposed to recover that money from branch. So, head office will debit branch. Got it? What if expenses of the branch are paid by the branch? Head office will write no end. Branch will write expense to what if the expenses of the branch are paid by head office? In that case, head office will write cash account credit, branch will write expense account debit. Branch has debited expense, head office has created cash. In branch, credit is missing. In head office, debit is missing. So, head office will debit branch, branch will credit head office. Branch will credit head office because branch owes money to head office. Head office will debit branch because head office is supposed to receive money from branch. Next, what if the goods are sold at branch? Head office writes no end because branch has to pass. If it is cash sales, cash to sales. If it is credit sales, debt has to sales. If you have collected money through check, you can write bank to sales also. Entries in the books of branch are very independent, just like any other separate entity. If the goods are sold to branch, sold by the branch to the debtors on credit. And the money is collected by the branch. Basically, money is collected by the uh, from the debtors by the branch. There will be no entry in the books of head. Branch will write the entry cash to debtors. However, if the goods are sold by branch to the customers, and these credit customers, debtors, they paid money to head office straight away, then what will happen? Head office has received money, head office will debit cash. Branch debtors have decreased, branch will credit debtors. So, cash account is debited in. Head office books, debtors account is created in branch books. 
there is missing debit in branch books which will be head office there is missing credit in head office books that will head office has collected money on behalf of branch branch is supposed to recover that money so you debit head office account in branch branch has basically oh, sorry head office has collected the money on behalf of branch so head office will credit branch account but this it's like they have collected money from the branch branch as an asset will ready what if the goods are written by branch to head office goods are written by the branch to head office so then you will reverse the entry that you had previously passed in the books of head office the entry is goods into branch to branch in the books of branch the entry is head office account debit to goods from head office see this the goods were sent your entry was branch to goods into branch now we will write goods into branch previously it was goods from head office to head office I will write head office to goods from. Going further, assets are maintained at branch. The branch can say, "I am incompetent to maintain asset entries. I don't know." You maintain asset. When I say maintain assets, no. Head office is maintaining asset ledger, not the asset. Asset is installed at the branch. Asset is used by the branch, but ledger account of asset is maintained by head office. In that case, what would be entries? If the asset is purchased and the amount is paid by branch. The asset is purchased and the amount is paid by branch. Who is maintaining the asset? Branch only. In this case, who is maintaining the asset? Branch. So branch will write the entry asset to cash. The office will write no entry. What if begin with the heading again? Asset is maintained by branch. Asset is purchased, but the payment is made by head office. Then branch will write asset account debit. Head office will write cash account. In branch, credit is missing. in head office debit is missing head office will debit branch because head office has paid money to branch branch will credit head office because branch has collected cash from it and depreciation entry will not be passed by head office entry will be passed by branch branch will write the entry depreciation account to asset depreciation because it's an expense asset account credit because it is the for us this is the entry the assets are maintained by branch If in case the assets are maintained by head office, then wherever asset is there, the debit credit should be done by head office. Asset is maintained by whom? Head office. And the asset is purchased. Payment is made by branch. If the payment is made by branch, branch will credit cash account. Head office will debit branch account, asset account. Asset account debit is recorded by head office. Cash account credit is recorded by branch. So in the missing debit, we'll write head office in branch. Missing credit will be branch in. what if the asset is maintained by head office asset is purchased and payment is made by head office the payment is made by head office then what do we do branch will write to entry why it did not make the payment it is not maintaining the asset ledger asset ledger is maintained by head office head office will debit branch payment is made by head office head office will credit cash got it but who is using the asset branch where is the asset situated branch if there is depreciation on this that expense has to be debited in branch books to find the correct profit but asset credit branch cannot why asset ledger is maintained by head office so head office will write branch asset got it the missing credit in branch books is head office the missing debit in head office books is branch ultimately the amount will be remitted by branch to head office head office receives cash if the head office is receiving cash cash to If the head office is paying cash branch and the opposite entry will be passed in the books of branch similar to this there was one question in the recent examination again i have shared it with you people you can check in the description you can try that question so so far the questions in the examination on branch have been pretty simple not four marker and six marker question in the old syllabus they used to be pretty lengthy now let's discuss updation or what we call as consolidation branch has maintained its records independently these records have to be now brought into head office books and then merged with head office books how to merge them there are two methods of consolidation one abridged consolidation two detailed consolidation one abridged two detailed what is the difference the detail in the difference lies with the accountant who is there at the branch i'll tell you theoretically as well as practically now practically what happens is in the case of the branch if the accountant at the branch is smart enough to prepare trial balance ledger journal journal entries will be passed will prepare ledgers and will prepare trial balance and the accountant at the branch doesn't know how to go further 
So what will you do? You will say it will dispatch the trial balance to head office. Head office prepares accounting. That is called as detailed consultant. Head office has to detailedly take item by item from trial balance, add it into their trial. However, branch accountant is slightly smart. And the branch manager wants to know the profit at the branch. Not from head office, but he wants to hear it from the branch manager. So in that case, branch manager after trial balance goes one step forward. And he'll prepare final accounts of the branch at the branch. Once the final accounts of the branch is prepared at the branch, the branch will send final accounts to head office. Head office does not take trial balance to update or consolidate. Head office will take final accounts of the branch and update it into the head office record. That is abridged. Here we are not taking detailed trial balance. We are taking abridged. Final accounts is summary. Trial balance is detailed. Detailed line by line item will take from trial balance. Detailed. I will take balance sheet and PNL and then abridged. The difference. Everything that is there in trial balance will be added to head office for corresponding item. Every asset will have debit balance. Credit that asset. Debit head office. And later you take it to respective. Every liability will have credit balance. Debit that liability, credit head office account. This is the entry in branch books. And in head office books, it will receive assets. Debit the asset, credit the branch. For asset received. For liability received, credit the liability, debit the branch. And repeat, for every asset transferred by the branch to head office under detailed consolidation, branch will write the entry asset credit, debit head office. Asset transfer to head office. Head office will write asset received, asset account debit to branch. For liability transfer, branch will write the entry liability debit to head office. Head office will write the entry branch account debit to liability. For each asset and each liability. Same is done for expense and income. Expense will be usually having debit balance. Branch will credit the expense debit head office. Head office will debit the expense credit branch. And incomes, sorry, this 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 is detailed consultant. Consult. And incomes will be usually having credit. Branch will debit the income, credit head office. Head office will debit the branch, credit the income. That way you transfer each expense, each income, each asset, each liability into your trial balance. Then you will prepare balance sheet, trading account, handle account for both head office and branch. This is detailed. In the case of abridged, head office does not take each asset, liability, expense, income. It will straight away take the profit of the branch and then include it. It will take trading account items and then include it. It will take payroll account items and then include it. That is abridged consolidation. By this, we are done with consolidation. Now it is. I have given in detail the entries in abridged and detail. Next up, we have with us foreign branch. We have done a little bit of this reference in accounting standard 11 is well, pretty much the same. Foreign operations is the name under accounting standard 11. So, the operations of foreign branch can be categorized into two. One, integral. Two, non-integral. Integral is extension of the head office operations is there in foreign. Non-integral is branch is treated as a separate entity. Does this matter? It definitely does. Based on the fact whether it is integral or non-integral, we will do accounting. If it is integral operations, we will try to translate opening stock at actual rate. Actual opening stock rate. If not available, we'll take transact. We'll take the act. We'll take the opening rate. Closing stock will be tried to be translated at actual rate of the stock, the date it was purchased. If not available, we'll get close. If it was non-integral, opening stock, opening rate, closing stock, closing rate. So what is this rate? Trial balance of the foreign branch will be in foreign currency. The trial balance which is there in the foreign currency should be converted into home currency. Only then you can draft final. So, the trial balance of the branch which is there in the foreign currency, how do we convert it into home currency? We should apply exchange rate. What exchange rate to apply? That depends upon the fact whether it is integral operation or non integral. Integral for opening stock, try actual if not available, opening rate. For closing stock, try actual if not available, opening rate. For non integral, opening, opening rate, closing, closing rate. Got that? And goods sent to branch, we will not apply any rate to transfer. Why? Goods sent to branch is there in the foreign branch account in foreign currency. But Indian head office account, we know the Indian rupee value of it. Write that Indian rupee value. Actual value of the goods sent by head office is available in head office books. Write the same value. Don't try to write the branch value which is in dollars or some foreign currency. Then, with regard to revenue items, that is expenses and incomes. These are there throughout the year. 
we cannot apply actual rates so we'll write average we'll write average both in case of integral as well as non integral and monetary items are non monetary what do you mean by monetary items items which can be expressed in fixed and determinable amounts of money for example cash debtors creditors loan borrowing are all monetary what are non monetary fixed assets investments inventory all of these are non monetary so if it is monetary item under integral operation as well as non integral operation we will record it at closing rate however if it is non monetary item under integral operations we will write it at original rate that the transaction date rate if it is non integral we will write it at closing rate and then we have head office balance in branch account branch balance in head office account this will be recorded at the actual value if i am head office and you are foreign branch in your branch of records my name is there in my books your name is there in my books your value is there in indian rupees in your books my value is there in foreign currency i don't want your foreign currency value i have indian rupee value that will be recorded but before you take that if there are any errors we need to rectify finally when you draft this trial balance of the foreign branch which is there in foreign currency when you convert it into home currency the new trial balance in the home currency will not tally why we did not multiply everything with same rate different amounts we multiplied with different rates the trial balance won't tally if it is integral operation such difference in trial balance will be posted to pnl account of head office pnl account of head office head office remember if in case it is non integral branch such difference in trial balance will not be posted to pnl it will be kept in a reserve called fctr foreign currency translation reserve foreign currency translation reserve this foreign currency translation reserve will be maintained in end office books till the time the branch is there next year difference also will be adjusted against it at the end when we close the branch like we are closing this video that fctr will go to general reserve if there is some balance i hope this was helpful when it comes to branch accounting as a bonus i have added some three questions one on debtors one on stock debtors one on final accounts as well as on foreign branch one of these questions if you can do you will be done with foreign branch as well as every aspect of branch please do check the description for that video and i hope this entire revision of branch accounting was helpful